Somebody e fix it here. Welcome back to the Edgelands. Apparently we're in the Scrubland. And this looks fairly serious. What is that thing that is rolling by? I have no idea. And my cat's still running from me. Um, looks like spacebar doesn't work still. Unless I need to position myself. Kick. Is that not accomplishing anything? Okay, well, who knows. So there's even graffiti in this place. And I scared off everybody again. Kick. Kicking is doing absolutely nothing. Examine. This part of the wall is scarred extensively with thinly carved markings and symbols, outlandish and indecipherable. Most striking of all is the depiction of an imposing cowled figure with outstretched limbs. Looking closely at the carving, you notice a small chunk of brick is missing from what you think is the figure's head. Can you guys see it? Um, of course I can't show you with my cursor. But there is like a, a like an etching on there. And it looks kind of scary, to be honest. The shit's going on down there. I don't know. I'm going over here first. A middle door marks the entrance to this dilapidated building. It's glinting sheen, a stark contrast to the moldering surroundings. To one side of the door is a small device with what looks like a slot for swiping cards through. A faded plaque above the device reads, Merc Tech Sales and Customer Compliance, Branch 113. Um, examine. You find the faintly blinking light strangely comforting in the dusky gloom, but you are unable to coax any useful results. The door is either locked or jammed, and refuses to yield to your efforts. I can't help but start to feel like there's some kind of anti-corporate message going on here. There's those things again. I guess, is that supposed to be like, like ghostly tumbleweed? Cool. I made a bridge. What was once possibly an impressive fountain sulks in shadow, discharging liquid in an erratic, fitful spurts. Dark shapes shift silently within the gloomy waters. You stare into the murky pool and notice something small and bright amid the shifting blackness. Take it. You reach an arm towards the pool and immediately jerk it back as a slick black eel rears out of the water. Holy cow. Snapping a serrated jaw in the direction of your fingers before slipping back beneath the oily surface. Can I look over there? I guess not. Cool. So, eels. Got me a bridge. You see how this is like dumping crap into the river? I'm getting anti-corporate, uh, vibes. A rather stylish lady in an expensive looking suit sits here, talking loudly at her mobile phone and paying no attention to you. Talk to her. She does not look up from her conversation. Yes, yes, I know, it's simply charming. A hand is held up towards you as an indication that she is terribly busy. Middle of nowhere, delightful to get out of the city. Clearly, you could be waiting for some time. Alright, well, you do you. Well, look who it is. Hi. A robed shape sits here, face all but hidden within... Oh, that's a different guy, I guess. Hooded folds. You hear low, uh, guttural mutterings, but cannot make out any words. Either your presence is not noticed, or you are not deemed worthy of attention. But the mutterings persist and you are ignored. Hi. A shabby yet optimistic food stall. A flustered man behind the counter gives you a somewhat desperate glance as he painstakingly chops, stirs, and sweats over his work. 
the whole scene emanates a slow sense of chaos and an acrid, fishy smell. Ugh. Trying not to breathe too deeply, you walk up to the counter. The chef continues his fussy activities, speaking hurriedly as he does so. Sorry, we're fully booked and understaffed. You'll have to come back later. I don't have time to cook and take orders right now. He pauses to mop his brow with his with what you think is a cabbage leaf, then continues his odorous work. It's so gross. He seems to be moving in a slow motion, wide-eyed and stunned. Wait, what? Help? Really? The heaviest and greasiest of silences. You're hired. Do a good job and I'll give you a free meal when you're done. Now go take her order. Her s he slides a pen and paper across the counter and points to the lady behind you. I didn't sign up for this. What the shit? Noticing the pen and paper you carry, the lady breaks off her conversation just long enough to reel off a convol convoluted food order. Words like infusion and reduction are deployed and you do your best to scribble it all down. Alright. Hi. You place the order on the counter and the chef snatches it, shouting order up to no one in particular. Without even looking at it, he slaps a dark, viscous sludge into a bowl, then spends far too long carefully arranging a rather sorry-looking garnish. At last, he steps back, admiring his work. Take that over and get the order from the next table. Gotcha, sir. I have no idea why I've suddenly got a job in whatever world we're in. Her discourse rages on as you place the food on the table. I don't see any food, guys. Clear your throat loudly and gesture with pen and paper. A dark claw with appendage, like a dark claw-like appendage, emerges from a sleeve and points to some items on the menu, which you diligently take note, make note of. As soon as the owner hits the counter, the chef slaps down another brimming bowl of uncertain blackness, an unsettling grin glistening on his sweaty face. Come on, come on, before it starts to congeal. All right. You put the bowl on the table, there is much sniffing and snuffling, sniffling and snuffling from inside the room, and you decide you would prefer not to see what happens next. I'm with you, girl. Is there anything over there? No? So you're going to pay me now, Chief? The chef leans heavily on the counter, hazy relief brimming in his eyes. Many thanks, stranger. Many thanks. Not had a night that busy since I opened. Here's your reward. You've earned this. He slides a bowl of black morass-like uncertainty across the counter, and you warily pick it up. Um, can I go sit down and eat it then? No? Do you have anything else to say for yourself? The chef is staring into the distance while sharpening a particularly viscous-looking knife, and, you, and gives you a happy nod, almost slicing off a finger as he does so. The bowl is empty, satisfied murmurings barely audible from inside the dark folds of the robes. They enjoyed their meals, I guess. The meal remains untouched, the conversation remains relentless. Okay, well, I mean, okay. Do I have to claim that on my taxes? So, am I supposed to put like this sludge on the door or something like that? I'm guessing so. There's not really anything else to interact with here. I can kick the barrels, but it doesn't do anything. Metal door marks the entrance. Yes, I know. Um, examine device. Anything new to open door? No. That's just going over and over. All right, let's try open door. Same difference. Okay. Let's make sure I don't have anything to the right. So now what? I've got this bowl on me. Kick. She does a little kick with her leg, I guess, but... Nothing seems to happen. Hello. Can I do anything with the sledge here? Apparently not. Can I examine these? Oh. 
All manner of graffiti and etchings adorn the section of the weather-beaten wall, of two shapes and images scattered among fading slogans and archaic tags. Daubs and scrawls conveying a gamut of sentiments, from wistful nostalgia for simpler times to expressions of cultural alienation and social unrest. There are other worlds, it says. And I don't think I can go to the left. I don't know why I can kick these barrels when nothing happens. I actually don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I've got this extra bowl of sludge. Pour it in the fountain. Put bowl of food in the water! You fling the bowl into the pool and watch as it slowly starts to sink. Then all at once the water boils with activity, a gnashing swarm of eels converging on the dubious meal. You quickly reach in and grab the shining item, which you now see is a sleek plastic card adorned with the words Merc Tech Industries. Is it Merc Tech the name of the corporation in Outlast? Was it Merc Tech or was it Mercarth? Something like that. Mercoff. It was Mercoff. Never mind. Different company. Although it could be the same company, they could have an umbrella. Um. Yep, yep, yep. I want to put card in the device. Card slides smoothly through the device and the door utters an obtuse yet promising clunk. I'm in. I'm a hacker. Look, the buckled doors of an elevator gape half open, offering a glimpse of dark hollows and occasional skittering noises beyond. Is that what that is? It's very dark in here, guys. I'm sorry. I just turned the TV on. The screen of this computer is frozen in a state of garbled digital panic. Okay, I guess it's a computer, not a TV. Within the mess of overlapping documents and windows, you see a single readable email. All right, let's snoop. Dear employee number 344, I don't know what you were thinking, bringing that thing in here, let alone putting it on your desk, but you were in violation of regulation 8871. No knickknacks, foliage, or any other form of workstation decoration permitted. I'm confiscating the item, and you are to report to the Merc Tech Center for discipline and disposal first thing Monday morning. Disregards a Merc Tech Regional Manager 972. Yeah, this is an anti-corporate game. I've just now realized. <laughs> Alright, so what do we got over here? The display shows a desktop which is blank, save for a single document open in the center of the screen, which appears to be a list, a list of tasks. Get Maintenance Team A to clean up feathers in the basement. Why did they have feathers in the basement? I don't know. Send maintenance team A to investigate unusual sounds in elevator. Repair sales report for meeting next Friday. Send maintenance team B to find out what happened to maintenance team A. Book hotel for a conference next month. Hire new employees. Poor guys. What's this down here? Absolutely nothing. We got a note on this monitor. The monitor just displays a confused mess of ceaseless, ceaselessly shifting letters and symbols. Stuck over one corner is a yellowing sheet of paper. Dear Regional Manager 972, it has been decided that Merc Tech Sales and Customer Compliance Branch Number 113 is to be phased out of Merc Tech Industries. Worker productivity is far too low and the alleged disappearances and other anomalies are disruptive and unsatisfactory. Other anomalies, huh? Please report to Merc Tech Central Office first thing Monday morning for reassignment. Disregards no Executive 767. There's a, there is a unusual. I don't know why that, that bothers me so much. It's one of my pet peeves of knowing the difference between A and Anne. There is an unusual uh, round stone carving sitting on the edge of the desk. You pick it up and it is curiously cold in your hand. Absent mindedly, you place it in your pocket. So, I got a stone. Alright, there's nowhere to go to the left. 
So what do I do with this stupid stone? No idea. Chuck it in the elevator, maybe? Because I don't think there's... Or do I, do I turn these off? No? Okay. Anything here? Step back. No. Alright, well, I guess I'm off. What could I possibly do with this stone? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna take- I'm gonna talk to these guys down here. See if there's anything to do here. Cause I don't think you use a stone on the graffiti. <laughs> or maybe you do. I don't know. Do I smash this lady's face in? No. Do I do anything with this guy? No. How about you, sir? I, I I just walk right through that, I guess. That's very strange. Can I not interact with them? Huh. I have a feeling that's a bug. Because I could walk through this, I, this table right here. And I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that. But also, it won't let me interact with them. Because right here, I can't walk through that. I don't know. So do I toss the stone in the fountain then, maybe? Probably not. It won't let me look in here. I hope my game is not bugged. But yeah, that won't let me look. Okay, now what? Do I use a stone to finish this carving? Um... Examine. Put stone in wall! Okay. It is a secret passage. Beyond the wall, an uneven path slopes upwards to the east. Okay, we'll keep going east, I guess. Oh, that flash is killing me. The factory! Again, you guys don't see it, but on my end, it's, it's pretty outrageous. That ought to be fixed. Alright, Putty Tet, where are we going? Well, the butterfly suggests that way. Oh, that's no fair. I can't go through there. A, partic a particularly cruel-looking gate blocks the way here. A rusty padlock coiled stubbornly around the handle. The bars rattle and the gate clings and thrashes, but the lock will not move. And never anything seems to tighten its grip. Alright, so I need to unlock that. A lone tree stands in proud defiance here. Stark bare branches grasping skyward, a web of exposed roots visible at the base of the trunk. Um, let's check the roots out. Like the thick, distended fingers of inhuman hands, the roots intertwine and extend in many directions. There seems to be a dark hollow beyond. Um, move roots? Okay. The tree bristles and creaks and the roots tense and stiffen as you touch them. Okay, let's examine the tree then. You lean in for a closer look and notice the an intricate lattice of scars and markings on the trunk. You get the impression that many fruitless efforts were made to remove the tree. So deep and extensive are its wounds. There are even scorch marks along one side, and around the back you find an axe deeply embedded in the chitinous bark. This tree is tough as hell. You grasp the coarse handle firmly and pull. The smallest hint of movements, you pull again. The axe twists ever so slightly. Using all your weight, you give the firmest push you can muster, and at the last, the axe yields, wrenching free with a jolt that sends you staggering. The tree seems to shudder in gratitude, limbs creaking calmly. Examine the roots again. Does that change anything? Oh, use axe on roots. That seems pretty awful. I'm not sure I should do that. 
I'm doing it. You swing awkwardly at the tangle and the tree creaking disapprovingly as you do so. The axe bounces jarringly as you blow lands, as your blow lands, cutting small notches which spurt a viscous black sap. I'm not sure I should do this, but I want to. The creaking tree grows more shrill and piercing as you hack. Eventually, hands calloused and stickly with black sap, you clear away enough roots to expose a gloomy tunnel beyond the axe breaking with your final blow. Alright, let's go. This seems like a bad idea, but I don't give a care. A large and weighty tome sits on a rather unsteadily looking, unsteady looking table. I can't read today, guys. Most of the pages seem to have been torn out in a hurry, and what, re what few remain are either blank or obscured by dappled green stains. You find a few black ink drawings of unusual creatures and one page of legible notes, written in an angular, archaic scrawl. Read the notes. A poem, perhaps, or a whimsical recipe. Distilled essence of stink bat will ward off autumn fevers. Infused bog toad drippings to tend the darkling vines. Boil slug rat fur in a paste to keep rains at bay. Chopped dark root sap will make a soothing balm. Oh my god. The pictures are intricate and detailed, seeming to move and shift in uncertain lights. You see a giant owl-like creature with antlers, a winged lion with the head of a raven, and a horned bear? It's cut off. It's cut off on the side of the screen. <sighs> Alright, put the book down. A cauldron. We got an extra space between A and cauldron. Made of dark, dull metal squats here, emanating a faint sense of heat, though the fire beneath is long dead. You peer inside and see the remnants of a curious green sludge, out of which occasional meaty bubbles pucker and pop. A delicate glass vial rests on the rim of the cauldron and appears to contain a small amount of the sludge. Take it. The multifaceted sides are warm to the touch. And you cautiously slip it into your pocket. Is this a bed? Looks like a bed. Do I use the vial on the book? Probably not, but I'm going to try it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already read this. Yeah, I don't think that's going to take me anywhere. Put book down. Um, wait a minute. Is the read notes thing completely separate? Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. No, okay. Let's go to the left, I suppose. Black, twitching tendrils sprout in abundance here, their dark, thorny strands blocking the path. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm supposed to pour the vial on the tendrils. If they're thorny, climbing over sounds pretty bad. Let's, let's pour the vial. Uh, with a slight sense of uncertainty, you pour the green liquid onto the vines. They hiss and writhe erratically before retracting back into the soil with unsettling speed. Alright, I have a feeling that my choices on the tree were were accurate, so I'm happy. An imposing middle door bars the entrance to this monolithic industrial citadel, featureless except for a small slot set up to one side. Open it. With no visible handle, all you can do is push. The door is unmoved and unimpressed. I've never been good at impressing doors, to be honest. So, what is this over here? Like their warehouse or something? You see a hulking shipping container that hatch pulled will open a few feet. Let's go in. I don't know why I think this... These look like slug cats. Uh, this corner of the container is occupied by an alarming pile of small plastic dolls. Their lifeless glazed eyes staring blankly into yours. Search it. Against your better judgment, you dig around in the pile. But all your delving uncovers is more and more of the little horrors. You shove one particularly harrowing specimen aside, and the pile collapses. Dolls scattering and scurrying across the floor. Scurrying? 
With the pile dispersed, you see a large hole in the wall, apparently leading into the adjacent container. This can't possibly be a good idea. This container is surprisingly empty, an unusual chill in the air. The walls are covered in strange markings, and a nondescript bundle lies in the center of an edged runic circle on the floor. The bundle is wrapped in a worn, crumpled suit jacket, held together with a creased black tie. Cautious unwrapping reveals a roughly scrawled note, a waxy dowel with no head, and a small plastic card. The paper is stained with dark, sticky marks, the writing spidery and difficult to read. A few scattered lines remain legible. Had the dreams again last night? Another meeting today? Fell asleep? Had enough? I quit. Small pink doll with no head. You stare at it for just long enough to never want to have anything to do with it ever again. It's a plastic card. Emblazoned with the words Murtech Industries. You slip it into your pocket. Okay, anything else here? So what is this symbol? It looks like a clock. Or it looks like, um, crosshairs. But you'll notice that, you know, over here, this side has got a line as well, like a triangle. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. You stand before the narrow hole leading back to the first container. Can I pick any of you guys up? Nope, I don't want to go in the hole. I guess that's it. Alright, let's exit. Um, as far as this card goes, I don't know. Do I use it to get into Merc Tech? Because it's got a bar. I don't think a card will get me past that. Open door. Oh, use card on slot. There you go. The card disappears into the slot and you hear a sorrowful peep. An expected pause, the gloomy silence seeming to swell with anticipation. Then at last the door slides open with a metallic grind that shudders your bones. A foreboding doorway leads into the monolithic industrial citadel. I mean, those words are pretty redundant. Um, wonderful. This looks like some kind of furnace. A hulking, dust-covered machine lurks here, silent and inscrutable. Wiping away some dust, you see a logo written on it in drab font. Merc-tech... merc -tech? Did merc -tech always have an E between merc and tech? Industries, merc-gen, series 122 power generator. Underneath is a large, inviting lever. After much pulling, pushing, and wiggling, you come across the conclusion that the lever is stuck. Alright. Are these red things just lights? Alright. What's this? That looks like a very large person. What the shit is that? It won't let me interact with it, so... Okay. That is a very large person. You see a mountainous figure here, towering after you dis at over you despite its slumped posture. The eyes look exhausted and unfocused, and it occasionally unleashes a bone-shaking yawn. Well, of course, he hasn't left this building in a long time, I'm going to assume, since the door seems to be awfully small for him. A sleek steel key dangles teasingly from its belt. We need that key. The giant looks down at you with bloodshot eyes. It speaks in a weary rumble, which makes your teeth chatter. What are you doing here? Factories closed. Used to make plastic playthings before that. Steel ships. Now nothing. All gone. Leave me be. I can't help you. I just want to sleep. I need to sleep. Um, sleep. Heavy lidded eyes well up, and there is a sigh... So forceful, it blows your hair back. Oh, sweet sleep. It's been so long. Not since the machine stopped and the workers left. I must sleep again, but it's too quiet now. Too still for sleep. So I need to start the machine up. Can I ask you about the key, actually? 
No, I don't want to take the key. I just want to talk about it. You politely inquire about the key, but your question is either unnoticed or ignored. Heavy lidded eyes well up, and there is a sigh so forceful, etc., etc. Okay. So I need to start that furnace somehow. How do I do that? I don't think there's any other object, is there? Oh. There's more. A Spartan desk with only a computer screen and a hazy photograph of an unsmiling woman with thick eyebrows. The screen is locked in an endlessly looping screensaver of a dancing black rat. It's the second time there's a black rat in this game, right? A sleek filing cabinet is here protruding like a metal obelisk. A shrine to order and a shrine to order and organization. Search it. Most of the drawers are locked and resist your attempts. The bottom drawer slides soundlessly open, however, revealing a flower wilted to the point of mummification and a stout hammer, which you take. All right. The flower I probably have to give to the giant for the key, and the hammer I probably use on the stove, I would assume. All right. Let's get this done. Hit lover with hammer! A steady swing and a near miss, the hammer swooshing awkwardly past your target. You squint and swing again. This time the blow connects and the lever clinks to the left with a mechanical jerk and a wheeze. Then we do the slow pan over to the giants. I used to be that way in that... Oh, is that what the slumber looks like? So these guys are slumbering too then? This is very weird. I used to need a fan in order to sleep. Um, a loud fan. I still, I have a ceiling fan, and I don't know if I need that sound or not. But I, I used to have like a, a floor fan that was really loud, and I needed it to sleep. Um, take key. Wonderful. See ya later, suckas. I got your key. Let's use that on the door and get the hell out of Dodge. I'm sorry, Merc Tech. Yeah, see, there's Merc Tech without the E, so that's a typo. Alright. Unlock the gates. The rest of the key and the rest of the lock make it hard work, but with persistence and much patience, you manage to coax the key in place, and with a reluctant turn and a rasp, the padlock opens and drops heavily. Fantastic. That's probably going to be a new chapter, so I'll call it an episode here. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.